Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. It's Shep Hyken. We are back with another episode of Amazing Business Radio, and this time, very excited because we have Forrester's Feedback Now, Steve Peltzman in the house, going to do a great interview with Steve. A few quick announcements before we dive into the interview, and that is if you have an amazing customer service story, please share it with me on any of the social media channels. I'm pretty much everywhere. And if it's a question, use the hashtag AskShep. I'll answer the question there, maybe in my newsletter, maybe on this show, or maybe my TV show, which is Be Amazing or Go Home, which can be found on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Prime, and even YouTube. Just go to BeAmazing.tv. That's BeAmazing.tv. Anyway, let's get into the interview. Steve, welcome to the show. So after eight years of leading Forrester's internal business technology, you jump over to Feedback Now. And uh, and what are you doing? Same thing over there, running the technology? No, no I, I, uh, I was one of the fortunate people who you know, start out in technology, and now I get to actually be like a, a business leader. So, okay, so you are leading the whole leading. business. Yeah, that's great. Excellent, excellent. So, well, let, we've got a lot to cover. Here's the thing: I love Forrester reports. I I'm on your list as somebody that does these types of interviews all the time. I'm receiving. Obviously, I I focus on the ones that are customer service and experience oriented. But what you do in your role is you're getting some incredible insights. So let's start with what's happening in the world today. In the last almost uh, two years, COVID, wow, we're coming up on year three of this pandemic. And I'm hoping it turns into an endemic from a pandemic. But what's been changing? What are the expectations? And I know I talk about this all the time, but I want to hear it straight from you and the research that you've got. So Forrester does research on us. Uh, We gather data with our smiley boxes uh, from airports, restaurants, retail, everywhere. And what we see is that it's nothing uh, earth shattering. People are, are anxious. They're staying home. When they do venture out, they're, they have anxiety. The, the experiences are new and awkward, new lines, new you know, mask requirements. Uh, hotels aren't cleaning rooms the way they used to. Everything's changed and people are they are the hotel rooms worse or better? Well, I don't know. I just stayed in one. um, I stayed in a few recently. Don't don't mention the brand if you're going to say something bad. bad. Good. I'll I'll let you do that. (laughs) But, uh, you know, there were the staff always does their best, but there's always these different things like so they won't clean the room every day unless you request it. Oh, okay, Yeah. So it's not that the room's dirty. It's that there's a change in the process. Yeah, yeah. And that's the point is that wherever you go, whether it's an airline, a hotel, a restaurant, something's different. And that that creates anxiety and that creates a lack of control. And companies have stepped up. They've done curbside pickup. They've done, you know, digital. They've gone to digital menus on the table. Everyone's doing something different. Uh, and they and the good ones have stepped up. Um but you, there's a lack of control out there. And what we have said uh, after looking at the data and doing the research is that, you know, the expectations have gone up to reduce that anxiety, to give that control back uh, as much as they can and, and um, make sure that things are easy and communicated well. Um, and I think overall, the expectations now um, are up. There, there are things about COVID customer experience that people like, and they never want it to go away. So the bar got kind of raised. So what are they? Um, you know, the expectations that you're not going to have a purely physical, um, uh, a purely physical experience all the time. So even uh, look at um, uh, healthcare. You know, uh, I had to do a uh, a screening. Uh, uh, you know. A, a visit, a pre, a pre, uh, uh, not surgery, but a pre, um, uh, what do you call that? A pre-operation, pre, uh, pre, yeah, procedure. pre op- visit, pre-surgery <laughs> visit. It doesn't matter what we call it. It happened before it happened. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I could do that on, on zoom. I could do that on, mm. on, on, you know, and 
now that when COVID goes away, cross fingers, knock on wood, right? When COVID goes away, I want that to remain. You know, the yeah. bar, in other words, the bar got lifted by this desire to work around, this need to work around COVID and this desire to make everyone's customers' patients uh, more comfortable. Yeah, I it, it's great. I no longer have to go into the doctor for them to look in my throat. They, I can open up my mouth into the camera, ah, and they can see in there it, it, with the right. I mean, if you've got a good cell phone, mobile phone, if you will, the camera in there is with the right lighting, they're not going to get much better picture than that. No, but <laughs> but but then w- with those sort of new things come other new nuances to discover what what if you're what if you're uh, offering that telehealth visit to someone who has bad internet at home what if you're doing that to an old person who isn't good with zoom and doesn't know how to you know fix the security on the computer to allow that thing to work it, there you know every advance creates awkwardness and complexity that every company has to adjust to so it's like a whole new world out there yeah you know my theory of that is if we are able to improve the experience of half or more of our customers, 75%. And there's outliers such as the ones that you mentioned that might not have a good internet connection for whatever reason. You know, we can go back to traditional ways of doing business for them and, you know, be able to take advantage of newer ways. And maybe it's a matter of once that customer comes in the first time, we can teach them Hey, let me, let me share with you that if you go down to your, your local Starbucks or a coffee shop that has a good internet connection, you don't need to come in here next time. Yep. Yep. You know, but the, the, it's just, um, I guess my point is like, there's, there's nuances with every, with every yes. new experience, with every new thing, there's nuances. Like I was talking to the head of patient experience at one of our clients and they were saying, you've heard of bedside manner. Well, we realized we had to develop video side matter it's zoom like side matter thing. Yeah, it's a different <laughs> or, thing you know? team side um, matter uh, yep yeah. so it's, yeah. it's challenges for everybody and companies are either stepping up or getting left behind real fast it's kind of like a it's kind of like an, a shock to the evolutionary system that everybody has to either adapt real fast and excel or they get uh they get uh extinct real fast yeah yeah you've got to keep up with the competition and i think even more than just the competition you have to keep up with uh, the best experiences the customers are having because they are starting to expect that from everyone. If they get a great experience at, I don't know, at a hotel, they might say, I want that same experience the next time I go to the doctor. Why can't they be as friendly as the people at the front desk of the hotel? Why can't they yeah. be as accommodating? Why can't they be as responsive? Whatever. I do want to get back. I've got two questions or comments, and let's riff on this a little bit. Have you heard of this uh, word skimp? Inflation, skimflation, S K I M P, skimpflation, like inflation, but skimpflation. Is that like where you uh, have less workers? And I'm just guessing. I haven't heard that's the that. result. Yeah. So here's what happened uh, there was an NPR show, and somebody used that word. I don't know if they've ever used the word again, but it popped up in my feed. And I've just been having so much fun recognizing that companies don't want to skimp, but they're forced to skimp because they don't have the workers. Just like you said, at a hotel, you're getting your, your service done. Here's an ironic thing is that when I'd go to a hotel and stay for two or three days, I'd tell them, I don't want the housekeeper. I don't want anybody coming in my room. Okay. Over those. And now it's like, Hey, we're going to give you what you want, whether you want it or not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, I, this has come up uh, in, in all sorts of places. Um, and everyone, one reaction I've seen is, Oh, you know, you're not being empathetic to the workers. Okay, sure. No one's asking. I mean, everyone needs to be nice to workers and understand. But the parent companies, uh, with this labor shortage and you know, COVID caused or not, are not figuring out um, that they you know how to be innovative, how to get around, how to deal with less labor out there. That they need to pay more in some cases, right? There was a mm-hmm. there was a. I saw something on LinkedIn where someone posted it was, it was Duncan. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say brand. So too late. Well, if it's, if it's nothing bad, I just don't like slamming a brand. Oh no, no. Well, so it was, it was a sign that said, please be nice to our employees, which fantastic, you know, At power- Duncan, <laughs> we could say that. I love that. You know, I actually, it's been a long time since I've written this article, but I wrote an article that said uh, a cup of coffee is $2 and 50 cents. If you're nice to us, it's $2 and 19 cents, 
<laughs> it's like you get a, you get, a, but you know what? We should be nice anyway, and we should be accommodating. Um, there is a hotel that's right next to where uh, my office is here, and a very well known brand. I won't tell you the name of it, but their initials are Ritz Carlton. <laughs> and I love the brand. They do great things. And I noticed because our, our condo, actually, you can see the Ritz from our condo as well. So I've got my office on one side. And I notice as I come home at night, as I'm walking home, I look and I see like not every window is lit up, which tells me over and over again, they're not filled. Finally had a chance to find out they aren't filled. As a matter of fact, they only keep half of the rooms open. Now, I think they move the rooms around because as a guest moves out, they'll open up a clean room and they may take a couple of days before they can get to that room to clean it properly because they've lost many of their workers for whatever reason. And, you know, the hotel business is interesting. You can still pay people a lot of money, but it's a 24 seven business. Some people don't want to work in the middle of the night on the weekends, et cetera, et cetera. But this is what's even more interesting. My friend decides to stay at the Ritz. He goes, do you know what they're charging over there? I go, I bet they're charging more. Why? Well, they're only keeping half their rooms open and I'll bet they charge more so that they can keep the business open, even though half the rooms are closed. And that's exactly what's happening. Happening, And that's what skimflation is, whether it's supply chain issues or um, employment issues, companies are forced to skimp on the services that they've offered before. And what the Ritz has figured out how to do is to not skimp on the service, they just have a supply demand issue. There is more demand than the supply they have capable. Uh, went to a restaurant in New York where you live, as a matter of fact, recently, and uh, half the tables were open. And I said, why are you making people wait in line? And the manager said, because we don't have enough people to serve the tables. And if you would wait 10 minutes, and I promise it won't be more than that, you're going to get the same experience you get as if we were fully staffed. And I thought, okay, there's a workaround. Yep. Yeah, and I'm 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 okay with that. I I think um, I think it's where you know certainly the free market economy will weed things out, right? And if every restaurant is in this place and no, and they're all you know some of them are doing it right, some of them are doing it wrong, the free market will will select just like uh, just like nature. Um, but uh, I think in terms of of customer experience in companies, they have to be smarter they have to understand this is a moment and it's a moment that and, and it's an you know i call it like an evolutionary moment where you either have to adapt or you like i said you'll be you'll be eaten and some companies are able to adapt other companies are not we we, we for example surveys we don't you know the, comp- the way companies figured out how the people felt about their experience has been pretty much surveys for many, many years, but surveys are what, what maybe single digit percentage of customers do after they've left. It doesn't help you when you're sitting in that restaurant or when you're still checked into that hotel. Whereas feedback now, what we're trying to do is help you fix that, help you understand what's happening, where, and by, by virtue of just giving quick red, green, yellow feedback, and then giving alerts, finding trends and helping you fix that issue. In yeah. the moment. In the moment. Because that's hence the word that's now. A, yeah, that's an evolutionary, that's a, that's a big difference. I, I talked about, um, you know, I, I look back in history to try to make an analogy. And I was thinking about Ford's assembly line, uh, you know, back 1913 or 19, whatever it was. He realized instead of assembling cars one by one, I'm going to have to rip out the factory floor to, to make this change. But we're going to assemble cars by moving, you know, the, them ac- uh, down this assembly line and having people do the same task over and over again. And we're going to make them cheaper and faster. And he, you know, think about the change you had to like the evolutionary change. You had to rip out the floor. You had to train and people. The investment, the and the, and also to get people's mindset to change. Yeah, the cultural aspect. Mm-hmm. Uh, is pro- might you could argue that might be the biggest part of that, right? And yet they did it, and yet and everyone had to follow in order to survive. I think the same is true for customer experience. Now, you this idea that you're going to assemble customer experiences, you know, week after week, or make changes weekly or monthly, that isn't going to cut it in this new COVID post COVID environment what you'll need to do is be able to react in the moment to instrument your processes, your, 
your train your staff, the cultural thing you mentioned, again, the biggest, even bigger now, but you have to rip out your CX factory floor and, and eventually build it up to where you can sense, analyze, and react uh, to these issues and improve them in real time. Right. Hey, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to get into what you think some of the best companies are doing to metaphorically rip out that factory floor. And we're going to continue the conversation. We are talking with Steve Pelsman, who's with Forrester's Feedback Now. Don't go away. We're coming right back. Hi, Shep Hyken, your customer service and experience expert. And I'm excited to tell you about my new book, I'll Be Back, How to Get Customers to Come Back Again and Again. Now, this book is packed with idea after idea on how to, just as the title implies, get your customers to come back. In the book, you'll learn that repeat customers aren't always loyal customers. Now, both are great, but there's a big difference. You'll also learn about 10 reasons a customer may stop doing business with you and three reasons you would stop doing business with them. And one of my favorite lessons is a six-step process for creating an I'll Be Back strategy. Of course, there's much, much more. You'll start getting more of your customers to say, I'll be back almost immediately. Just go to www.I'llBeBackBook.com. Dot com. Again, that's www.I'llBeBackBook.com. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. We're back on Amazing Business Radio talking with Steve Peltzman from Forrester's Feedback Now. Now, you mentioned that if there's this metaphorical factory floor uh, just as, as you were using the metaphor of the Ford assembly plant, which went from uh, individual cars to an assembly line, what great, brilliant thinking that was. That type of thinking is taking place. I mean, we never would have imagined what could happen. I, I look at grocery stores and I, I look at how they've changed and you can order online, pick up at the front of the store. They'll bring it out to you. You can have it delivered to you. I, I, who would have ever thought there were options when it came to buying groceries? But that is such a simplistic example. Tell me what some of the best companies or organizations or industries are doing to meet these new expectations that our customers have. Sure. So the... I talked about like surveys too late, you know, you you can't have a a two month cycle. And then I also talked about like the idea that you have to instrument uh, your, your factory floor, whether it's a hotel, airport, whatever, such that you're sensing, analyze and acting on this customer experience in real time. Um, What we see in, in our product is, is geared towards this is the next stage, which is kind of getting out in front of that. So let me give you an example, um, an airport, believe it or not, an airport in New York, that which used to be thought of as the worst one is now one of the more advanced ones. They're working with I, us. I'm going to guess that's LaGuardia. I guess. <laughs> well, you said they're one of the best in advance. I mean, best. all you have you to do is LaGuardia take a look now? at the new construction. It's absolutely oh beautiful God. and amazing up there. I urge everyone, actually, I can't believe... You know, I grew up as a New Yorker. It's really weird to say this, but I urge everyone to go check out LaGuardia. It's like almost <laughs> the destination of itself. It's anyway. nice. The airport is, and they're going to do a lot to JFK, I understand, to uh, update yeah. that as well. Yeah. So what they're doing there with us is pretty amazing. Um, the time it takes to go through TSA, right? Um, no one likes to go through TSA and they have systems, uh, not ours, but they have systems and uh, where they can figure out what the average, ongoing average time it takes to get a passenger through TSA. So think about that for a second. Uh, let's say it takes uh, the average time to go through is 13 minutes, right? Um, you know that if the average, if it took you a minute to go through that line, you're pretty happy. If it took you two minutes to go through that line, you're probably still pretty happy. Conversely, if it took you an hour to go through, you're enraged. If it took you an hour and five minutes to go through, you're enraged, right? But somewhere between happy and enraged, there's a break point. And most humans kind of operate where they, they kind of think the same way, where everyone kind of breaks. After, say, 15 minutes or whatever the number is, everyone's getting pretty upset. So if you, if we can determine with our sensors and their data, if we can determine that that break point where everyone's kind of magically getting upset at the same time, plus or minus a little bit, is 15 minutes, then why wait until everyone's upset to open up a new line? Why not open up a new line at 14 minutes, right in front of that break point? And by the way, that break point 
is changing over time. If it's if there's a lot of traffic near the airport, everyone got there later than they, they expected, they're more anxious. Maybe it's not 15 minutes now, maybe it's 13 minutes now. So you open up a new line at 12 minutes. This is a, adaptive and predictive customer experience, which is really advanced. I, there's very few customers out there doing it now. This is where we as a product. When you say customers, very few of your customers. Our customers, yeah. Doing it now. So um, very few companies and brands. Very few companies or organizations doing it, but but they are. The best ones are doing this um, because they recognize the opportunity to shine in this kind of new environment. Uh, I can give you another example too. Yeah, I'd love to hear a couple of examples just so it really becomes crystal. Something maybe uh, outside of hospitality and travel. Sure. Uh, well, the, the the one I was going to give was a uh, roadside. Uh, it's a little travel, but bear with me. It's 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 not it's not the same as airline travel. Yeah, yep. restaurants. Let, let's take restaurants. restrooms. Pretty basic, right? We're going to talk about restrooms. I We're like talking about restrooms because restrooms roadside restrooms even more exciting. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Like you wouldn't think, but it, the multiple studies have shown that the experience, whether you're in a um, restaurant. Uh, a fast food place, a, a roadside inn, uh, the experience you have in the restroom, if it's awful, it kind of infects your entire experience. And that's probably true for just about everything, doctor's office, everything, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it, 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 it's all sorts of research has shown that that restroom experience is kind of key, right? So in, re in reaction to that kind of data, we see our best clients, our best clients um, being really methodical about that. So they put our sensors they tell us about the cleanliness of this restroom and they click green, yellow, and red, and they start to figure out uh, how many uses um, they have people counters going in and out of that restroom. And this is, and this isn't um, what I'm talking about is, is actually happening with our best clients. They figure out how many people are going in and out. They, they track the red, greens, and yellows. And they and by the way, out that's your instrument is you have a box that yep. allows people to say, I'm happy. I'm neutral. I'm upset. Yeah, we red, Red, uh, green would be happy, yellow, yep. neutral, red, upset. Yep. And we don't ask for your name. We don't ask you five questions. And we do that on purpose because we just want you to reach out, click and walk away. And, and when we do that, we get super high volume, 40% mm -hmm. or more will click that button. So if we know how many people are going in and we know how many people are clicking green, yellow and red. That, that client of ours uh, figures out um, the break point at which um, they should go and clean that bathroom. Uh, before people, the reds accumulate. And then what they do is they scramble a crew. Crew gets an alert. You know, bathroom number three is hitting that, getting near that uh, that area where people are going to get upset. They scramble a crew. The crew actually uses our stuff to check in. They click a button. So now I know how quickly they responded. Mm. And then they're cleaning and they check out. Now I know how quickly it took them to take care of the situation. And this client of ours examines all that data to find the optimal amount of service because if they're doing not enough service, then they're then they're pissing, uh, uh, no pun intended, pissing off uh, the, the uh, <laughs> their their, um, their clients, their customers. Spoken but if they like a true much, New Yorker, thank you. If they do too much, if they if they send someone there every half hour, they're wasting money. And going back to that skimflation, you you can't waste money right now with mm -hmm. workers. So these optimal processes are just are are you would think that no one is doing them, but I. I'm here to tell you the most advanced companies are doing that and they will become more and more and more. Those are, those are the mammals that will uh, survive the apocalypse and leave the dinosaurs behind. That is great quote. Great quote. And that's a great way to wrap up except for my final question. The one thing question, one last nugget of information you want to share with us. What would it be? Um, this idea of ripping out the floor seems daunting. It seems incredibly onerous. Um, it, yes, it is. It's a big thing. However, you can start small. You can try this in one bathroom. You can try this in one uh, security line. You could try this in one restaurant. You could figure out your process and you could figure out the effect. And then you try it in the second one, the third one. So the one bit of, uh, of, of information I would say is start small, try it. And you need to do it. Um, you need to create these moments because every impression that people have now could be their first impression of your restaurant since COVID or your first impression of, of the department store since COVID. And that's a moment. And, that and it also creates a lasting impression if it's uh, a, a, a either extremely positive or extremely negative, that impression lasts. 
It's Last important. Friends. So start small and start quickly. Is, I like uh, that. And you know what I would also suggest is if you decide to start small, which is a great way of doing it, make a list of all that you want and then prioritize yeah. and hit them one at a time instead of trying to do it all. Maybe yeah, you'll be able to do two or three. But the idea is you do start small. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yep. And you and every comp, even if you're all restaurants, every restaurant's different. Even if you're all hotels, they're all different. So there's we 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 see trends, but every one of our clients, uh, there's something different that's easier for them to do than someone else. You know, right. Makes a lot of sense. So well, Steve, every- thanks for for being our guest today on Amazing Business Radio. It is fun. Good to see you. Appreciate you sharing your insights and your wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up another episode. Please come back next week. We'll have another interview and it will be, I promise you, amazing. And until that time, this is Chef Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.